is a serious misunderstanding of the situation. The truth is that strong euro can only be built on strong nation with strong moral identity. Let's recall the famous sentences of founding father Schumann, either Europe will be Christian or there will be no Europe. My fifth statement highlights a complicated situation which has occurred because the European Union consists of two parts, the Eurozone and the non-Eurozone countries. To overcome the crisis and enhance cooperation between Eurozone countries is of utmost importance, not only in fiscal, but economic and budgetary fields as well. Non-Eurozone countries are obliged to support this, but in the meantime, non-Eurozone countries should be less create and implement their own economic policies. We always have to take care of our common basic values, and there is no way back from our common achievement, what we call legal achievements. However, alone to recall again, Europe can only be strong if it respects the nation it consists of. We have to be aware that Europe is under strong pressure. It has to find emerging forces of disintegration to continue to serve its political and economic role in the continent. We have to recognize and handle those forces. The financial sector, which reached already a high degree of integration, has recently been showing strong signs of fragmentation. It is manifested in deliberate of attacks from the territory to the center and in differences of interest rates for available credits for investment within and inside the Euro law. Furthermore, restrictions from capital movement have to be applied to handle the situation in finance. We can experience growing fear that free movement of persons could lead to pressure on the system of social allowances in some member countries. But the most alarming development is the decreasing public support behind European integration in most member states. <coughs> Finally, my last thesis would refer to the post crisis Ladies and gentlemen, we have to, or we should at least understand, that after the crisis, nothing will be like it used to be before. <coughs> Despite our all efforts, it is likely that recovery will be a long-lasting procedure. Europe, which was kind of crazy before, down to earth now. It is obvious that it was a historical mistake that the former communist countries had not been let join the European Union immediately after the collapse of the dictatorship. All experts agree that the growth engine of the continent could be in the future Central Europe. If these countries had been able to become members of the European Union, let's say, at the beginning of the 90s, the Union would have gained an additional potential for growth and would have faced the challenges of the crisis in a much stronger position. <coughs> Enlargement has recently, seems to me, been deleted from the agenda of the European Union, which means that our community has unfortunately not learned from its old mistakes. Maybe I will make now the least possible popular statement of European politicians in the large